On the evening of March 14, 2019, Cyclone Idai swept in from the Indian Ocean and made landfall on the coast of Mozambique. And it was the city of Beira, with half a million inhabitants, which was affected first. The devastation was enormous, with the cyclone came torrential rain and floods. In news reports, we could see a city buried underwater. If we had previously found it difficult to visualize the climate crisis, the images coming out of Beira were a journey into the future. Thousands of people clinging to treetops and rooftops trapped in rising floods. The storm swept over the rest of the region, creating havoc all the way up to northern Mozambique and further on into Malawi and Zimbabwe. Rain and heavy flooding destroyed bridges, roads, farmlands and left thousands of people without food and water. Hundreds of thousands of people were driven from their homes. Six weeks later, another cyclone arrived. Cyclone Kenneth. Never before had Mozambique had two cyclones so close to each other. News reports talked about how Cyclone Idai was a warning about climate change. What was experienced earlier this year is actually in line with what we expect with climate change. Although further research is needed, scientists do believe that there are links between climate change and tropical cyclones. But one thing is certain. The children are the ones who are hit extra hard in disasters such as the cyclone in Mozambique. Not just when the disaster itself happens, but also for many years to come. For this episode of Save the Children documentary, we went to Mozambique to hear the children's stories about what it was like to be in the midst of one of South Africa's worst natural disasters and what life is like today, several months later. After a long drive on a winding road through a dense forest, you arrive at a small community located in the province of Sofala in central Mozambique. In the middle of the community stands a large white tent. In the tent, about 50 children have gathered to sing together. It is a so-called child-friendly space that Save the Children set up after Cyclone Idai struck. Through various activities, the place will serve as a refuge for the children. A place to create structure and normality in an otherwise chaotic environment. Outside the tent, children play volleyball with the activistas or animadores that Save the Children's volunteers are called. Virginia is 18 years old and she's from here. After the cyclone, she was asked to be an activista for Save the Children. And she said yes, since she had seen and lived in the suffering and misery that the cyclone left behind. An activista, Virginia explains, is a person that interacts with the children that come to save the children's child-friendly space. We sing, dance and play with the children to make them forget about the cyclone. After the cyclone, around 150 children came to save the children's child-friendly space. At first they were scared and had a hard time playing. But over time, things got better. Around the tent there are houses with large holes in the roofs. And scattered on the roads all around are tall trees that have been uprooted. These are traces of the cyclone Idai that crippled this society in March 2019. Alima, Antonio, Anna Maria, Julia, Elio and Adil were all here when the cyclone came to their village. My name is Alima and I'm eight years old. Before the cyclone, life was better. I tend to be with my siblings and my mom. My dad died when I was little. I help with the cooking and harvesting. After, I play with my friends. Mom, I'm going to school. 
My name is Antonio and I'm 12 years old. My family works with cultivation. I go to school and then I play hide and seek or play football with my friends. My name is Anna Maria and I'm 10 years old. I live here with my mom and older siblings. Before the cyclone came here, we had a good life. We harvested a lot and had food. When the cyclone came, everything was destroyed. My name is Elio and I'm 10 years old. My mom talked about the cyclone and I thought she was kidding, that it wasn't real. On the same day she told me not to go out because of the winds. But in the afternoon I went out anyway. I felt the winds blow harder than usual. My mother looked for me right away and asked me to come home. That day I remember there was a lot of wind. Later in the evening when it got dark, the winds started blowing harder and finally the rain came. As pessoas estavam a dizer essa vento foi mandado com Satanás. People said that it was Satan who had sent the wind. Eu estava a dormir e minha mãe estava a dormir no quarto e daí quando minha mãe andava a dormir no quarto. I was at home sleeping when one of the walls in my room collapsed. My mother came running in and pulled me out of bed. In the living room, I saw that the roof was gone. I could feel the strong winds. Because when we tried to open the door, the winds came into the house and we could barely stand up. My name is Julia and I'm nine years old. I was in our house when the cyclone came, but then all the walls collapsed. We ran to the headmaster's house. On the way there I saw sheet metal roofs flying around, and they made loud noises as they hit houses and people. The trees had fallen down and lay on the roads. Lots of people had taken shelter in the headmaster's house, even our teachers. I was in the house when it started to shake. The roof flew away and we could feel the rain. I was afraid that the house would fall on us. We only had one large room and no furniture, so there was nothing to hide under. We had nothing, nowhere to go, no food, no clothes. My name is Adil and I'm 12 years old. People disappeared or died. A neighbor of ours, for example. She was on her way home in the evening when the storm hit. The winds were so strong that a tree fell down and hit her in the head. She died. People kept talking about everything that they had lost. Their houses, clothes, livestock and chickens. This whole place looked like a beach with water everywhere. It was a difficult time after that because we had no clothes. We had to work extra to be able to buy new things. I started working on the harvest. I was scared and afraid to play outside. It was raining a lot so there was mud everywhere. When the sun finally came we could play a little bit. Then I also saw that our school was a mess. After the cyclone, my mother told me not to drink any water outside the home because someone could have died in the water. Many of my friends had moved to camps in Guaraguara because they couldn't build new houses. 
Since then, only one friend and her family have moved back. After the cyclone, I missed my friends and all the games we used to play. I also missed going to school, because we couldn't do that then. The roof of the school had blown away. The teacher tried to put the roof back, but then he had to leave. It took a month before we could start school. It was fun to start school again, but I couldn't stop thinking about the cyclone, for the school was completely ruined. Okay, let's go. Tá bom então. Onde está a coisa aquela armadura? Norberto Varinde works with field coordination at the Save the Children office in Booth. And he goes out into the community at least twice a week. Wearing a beige Save the Children vest, he moves with quick steps and greets children and adults. At a water pump, people stand in line with yellow cans. A little further away is the elementary school. Norberto shows us one of the five classrooms destroyed by the cyclone. Shattered lamps, windows and benches lie scattered on the floor. This is um, one of the rooms, the classroom that was blown up by, by, by Cyclone Idai. And um, when the Cyclone came, blown away all the roof. Um, some of the um, classroom chairs were damaged. And um, due to, to the condition now, the children cannot uh, use the classrooms. But several children with some partner like care managed to, to build the transitory learning spaces where now children are, are taking their classes outside. Save the Children is currently renovating another school in the district of Booth. There are more than 300 schools in the district that are in great need of renovation in order to be used. But right now, there are no resources, Norberto explains. This is an um, example of uh, more than 300 classrooms that the district adds. At this side, the north bank of uh, Rio Bus, the, the damage were mostly by, by floods. But also schools, health centers were destroyed by, by the winds, the strong winds. At the south bank of the river, you cannot find any um, school that escaped. And uh, all the classrooms are, cannot be used by now. There are some schools, for example, that uh, managed to recover some uh, roof sheets and just to to fix uh, up the point where, where they can, but it's not safe for the, for the children. It's, it's, it's not a, a long-lasting solution, but uh, they're doing something. It's just because they cannot just stop living. They, can, they, cannot, they cannot surrender to the, to the disaster. Behind the school are three tents. These are the temporary classrooms that Save the Children set up. But this is just a temporary solution. The children need real classrooms, partly to be able to get a good education, but also to be able to heal from the trauma that occurred after the cyclone, says Norberto. Buildings can be rebuilt, um, property can be re- recovered, but uh, the, the problem is now is um, how children will recover from the shock because when they come to school and see the classroom uh, destroyed they will f- quickly remember the day the cyclone get into getting in, in in the area and uh, that is not good because uh, we are trying to fight to help the children to forget what happened but when uh, memories like these um, uh, are still seen by their eyes the heart also shocks again. After the cyclone, the school took a break for a month. Because uh, the teachers were psychologically shocked, the students were sh- psychologically shocked because uh, some students, they lost their parents, some parents, they lost their children who are students, and also as a teacher hearing that you lost your student, you feel shocked and uh, 
you know. Everyone in the community was affected, explains David, who is an English teacher at the elementary school. He comes from the city Beira and moved here three years ago. He was here himself when the cyclone struck with full force. Yeah, I was inside of my house. The house was shaking. And then uh, I I moved to the to that conventional house of uh, deputy headmaster. I asked if I could stay there for a while. Then he said, "Yeah, better if you have something to take in your in your house is better to go and take now before the the wind increase the the speed." I said, "Okay." When I was going back to take my TV, I have a small TV. I was afraid of water linking from the roof. Maybe it could get wet. Then when I, when I went back to take it, I found the roof was already blown out. Outside, the, it was like a, it was dark. And uh, apart from the wind, it was also raining heavily. David went back to the headmaster's house. There, several teachers had gathered, but also other people who had lost their homes. The cyclone knocked out power and communication lines so no one could contact friends or family who were in other cities where the cyclone had also struck. David's parents lived in the city of Beira. He had no idea how they were feeling or if they were even alive. After two weeks, David decided to go to his parents in Beira. But the only way he could do it was on foot. That day when I was going Beira, they were still some water and those water was uh, running with a very high speed. We walked uh, 89 kilometers on foot in the water. Sometimes the water was reaching over the the shoulders and I was uh, in danger of uh, dying that day. Myself, while I was going, I was saying that uh, I'll never come back. I, was, I prefer to be jobless but alive. His parents had survived and David came back to school, which started after a month break. At school, both teachers and children were wrapped in bandages. Many had received injuries from the corrugated steel roofs that had been flying around in the strong winds. But not all students came back. All in all, around 20 students never returned to school. The teachers have on several occasions tried to talk to the parents. But it's hard to convince people who have lost just about everything, David explains. And they said that we don't live on uh, uh, schools, we live on agriculture. It's better you to help us there doing something on the farm rather than going to school. School brings no benefit and we don't judge them. We just uh, go and talk to them patiently in order to take their baby to school again. Over a million children were affected by the cyclone. In addition to missed schooling, there are many other risks left for children after a natural disaster such as the cyclone die, the lack of food, water and the spread of deadly diseases. But also other risks, such as child labor, early child marriage and trafficking. My name is Ilda Maria Narciso. Ilda is a colleague of Norberto and works as a child protection coordinator at the Save the Children office in Buz, a city that was hit hard by the cyclone. A river flows through the city, and as a consequence of the cyclone, the river flooded and large areas were submerged in water. Hundreds of people became homeless and were relocated to nearby areas. Que algumas são órfãs, ficaram órfãs durante o ciclone, outras ficaram separadas das suas famílias também durante o ciclone. Many children were separated from their parents, both during and after the cyclone, Ilda explains. É, primeiro, quando estamos a falar de meninas, podem correr o risco de sofrer um abuso sexual, não é? Those children who have been separated from their parents or have become orphans are particularly vulnerable. For girls, it's about the risk of being exposed to sexual exploitation. For example, Hilda says, a man can offer help to a girl and the situation can end up with a girl living with a man and being exposed to both sexual exploitation and child labor. When it comes to boys, it's mainly about the risks of different types of child labor. And by extension, this means for both girls and boys that they stop going to school. 
Depois também temos a área de gestão de casos, não é? onde fizemos acompanhamento de certas crianças. Save the Children engages in case management, which means that the organization follows up on specific cases where the rights of children are violated. Também temos lá as animadoras que trabalham no espaço amigo da criança. Another important part of the organization's work has been to create child-friendly spaces with psychosocial support, but also to reunite the children with their families, or to find family homes for the children who lost their parents. As news of the cyclone spread throughout the world, experts and politicians began to talk about the cyclones as a consequence of climate change. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres made a statement explaining that Cyclone Idai was a warning of climate change. And Garza Machel, one of Mozambique's most famous politicians, said in a press conference that Beira is the first city to be completely devastated by climate change. But the question is, what is the role of climate change when it comes to cyclones such as Idai? Yes, so there are certain regions, certain oceans, um, tropical oceans, where we have these, and there are certain places where they are more frequent than other. And and this region where Mozambique is, there, there are not that many, but there there can be uh, hurricanes in that region as well. Gunilla Svensson is a professor of meteorology at Stockholm University. She followed the development of Cyclone Edai in March 2019. She explains that the cyclone itself was not extremely strong but that a prolonged rainfall with floods exacerbated the effects. Another factor is climate change. But since cyclones do not occur very often, it's difficult to see a clear link. So it's a bit difficult to, so, to do statistics over and see changes because they, they're not, I mean, there are not so many, so many, making statistics of them is, is quite difficult. And there's a lot of natural variability between different years and different decades and so on, and different oceans, ocean regions as well. I and mean, we can never say that one storm is climate change. It is hard to know what is due to natural variations and what is due to climate impact. But what we know is that a tropical cyclone can only occur when the water temperature is about 27 degrees. And with global warming, we also get warmer world seas. So what the climate change is doing is that we, with climate change, the ocean are getting warmer as well. So, uh, and, and warm water takes more space than cold water, which means that the sea level is rising. Rising sea levels means a higher risk of floods. And rising temperatures means warmer air and more rain. So you have a higher sea level to start off with, and then you have the tropical cyclone coming with a low pressure, which means that you are increasing the, uh, the height even more. So you add that on top of something which is really already higher. So the risk for flooding is then higher in with climate change because you have a higher uh, higher mean levels mean sea level to start with and then um, warm air can contain more moisture so there is a risk for having more precipitation as well according to the research done cyclones will not increase in the future on the other hand the ones that do occur will hit with much greater force gunilla explains and uh, and the studies we have shows that there will not be more of the hurricanes, but the ones that are really intense will get more intense. So all these things speaks in, in favor of what, what was experienced earlier this year is actually um, in line with what we expect with climate change. Sea level rise, flooding and extreme weather events make the cities along the coastline of Mozambique the most vulnerable in Africa to climate change. The southern part of the country is also affected by droughts. Although some climate adaptation has been made in the country, the resources needed to prevent the damages are far from adequate. People had barely recovered from the devastation of Cyclone Idai when another cyclone struck. Cyclone Kenneth. And this time, it was the northern province of Cabo Delgado that was affected, a region that is among the most marginalized and underdeveloped areas of the country. 
The island of Ibo in the Indian Ocean off the coast of Mozambique was hit hard. A car-free island with swaying palm trees surrounded by a glittering blue sea. At the same time an island where the majority of people are living in absolute poverty. They rely on fishing for their survival and there are very few other opportunities for development. The government knew in advance that Cyclone Kenneth was coming. Warnings were issued and assistance was quickly in place. But despite that, the devastation was massive. About 5,000 people live here and nearly everyone lost their homes. Just as after Cyclone Edai, Save the Children, together with the Ibo Foundation, set up a child-friendly space where the children could come for support. Elina, Ali, Faria and Gabriel are from Ibo and they all participate in Save the Children and Ibo Foundation's activities during the daytime. They were all here when Cyclone Kenneth came to their island. My name is Elina and I'm 11 years old. Life here is quite difficult but also quite good. The hard thing is that people are always insulting and arguing with each other about who is the strongest. My favorite place here on the island is the beach. I really enjoy sitting on the beach and feeling the fresh breeze. I also like to play volleyball with my friends. I have many friends. My name is Ali and I'm eight years old. I like to read and learn things. I help my brother wash dishes and wash clothes and I help my uncle cook. My name is Faria and I'm 12 years old. Life here at Ibu was good, but it got worse because of Cyclone Kenneth. It happened on April 25th, from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock in the afternoon. There was a person who went from house to house and said that we should get to a safe place. But no one believed that the cyclone would come here. But then it started around 10 in the morning. It was a little lighter wind and then people started to worry and think about what they had heard before. Then at 2 o'clock the winds became stronger and stronger. The clouds were really dark. The water in the sea got really high. People started running back and forth. I was in our house. I heard the wind and the roofs breaking outside. My sister lived in the house next door. Her house collapsed. I heard very loud noises outside my house. It was the sheet metal roof that flew around. One of my friend's houses was destroyed. First, the roof that blew away came loose and slammed into our house. Then it started to leak water. I was sad and I thought that we were going to die. The water sounded like this. And the wind sounded like this. I saw huge bricks lifted from the ground and flew up into the air. My house collapsed pretty much immediately. So I was allowed to be in Sandra's house. Sandra worked for the Ibo Foundation. I saw people running around. It was dark even though it was during the day. 
At Sandra's house there were several children and mothers inside. We were all scared and asked each other over and over again. Why is Cyclone Kenneth here? When the roof started to drop from the house, it sounded like gunfire. It was raining down on us. After the cyclone, I talked to my friends who had not thought that the cyclone would come. Do you believe it now? I asked. Yes, we believe it, they replied. We had to sleep outside for a few days. Our toilet and our kitchen were full of water. We tried to get rid of the water, but we couldn't because it was raining all the time. All the clothes were soaked and dirty. The news on the radio said that we would get 15 days of rain. We washed and washed, but because it was raining, our clothes never got dry. So we had to walk around in wet clothes. There were roofs and telephone lines in the streets. That day I had a headache and a stomach ache. I slept until afternoon the next day and dreamed that a monster came and took us. After the cyclone they went from house to house to distribute food. Potatoes, rice, porridge and oil. So we could cook and eat as usual. They also handed out water purifying tablets because the water had become dirty. After three days we could start drinking the water again. Everyone helped each other. Even though you had tattered clothes, no one laughed at you because the cyclone had affected everyone. I lost my school books, but it's my backpack that I miss most of all. But also our freezer, which broke. One thing that I really miss is my shoes. They were in my sister's house that collapsed. A pair of pink sneakers that my mother bought for me. I lost and I miss my drawing books. Things started to get better as we cleaned the houses and removed everything that had been broken. We also had to help clean up the school and wash our school uniforms. After that we could go back to school. But despite that, we never stopped thinking about the cyclone. I'm afraid that it will come back, that my house will collapse on top of me and that people will die. De todos nós sobrevivermos. Deixar só as casas muito melhor como antes de ver ciclone. I wish that everyone who had their houses destroyed could have new houses so that they could live as they did before the cyclone. Sempre a viver nas suas casas. Primeiro choveu pouco a pouco, se vê estava a poder pouco, pouco. As dez horas que estava a chover pouco, depois as pessoas começaram a More than half of the 30 million inhabitants of Mozambique are children and teenagers under 18. Nearly half of the children in Mozambique live in absolute poverty. On top of all the challenges they were already facing, climate change is now making their lives even more difficult and dangerous. These children face an uncertain future unless we limit the impact of climate change and invest in ways to protect them from harm. Because every child has the right to survive, learn and be protected. You've been listening to Save the Children documentary on the cyclones in Mozambique.
The names of the children who were interviewed have been changed for privacy reasons. And my name is Linda Jensen-Kidane. This is a production from Soundtelling.